Hi everyone, how's it going? Today I want to catch you up to speed about my recent travels during the COVID situation here in July 2020. And I'm sitting here in my new apartment, finally had a chance to catch my breath and just to make a little video here. Basically, I went um, traveling yesterday from Texas to Monterrey, Mexico, and I wanted to cover some topics here, including travel and security, stores, attractions, streets and restaurants, uh, food places, and then last, new, my new apartment and the neighborhood surrounding here. So I hope this video, this video comes out okay with the audio. It has worked in the past when I was in Colombia. I don't know how it's going to work today. So with respect to traveling during this COVID time, I want to mention that I did not have to take any temperature checks or do anything major other than filling out a form. So before I went, I checked with the U.S.-Mexican embassy just to see what the current status is. Their official statement is that Nuevo León, which is the state in Mexico that contains Monterrey City, is considered red along with about 17 other states. And it's red under the federal system, meaning only essential activities are allowed. And I also checked recommendations from the CDC. They had said that travelers should avoid all non-essential travel to Mexico. But, you know, I'm somewhat of a rebel, so I went anyways. <laughs> I didn't want to hang out in my city for, for vacation. And so the last thing I checked was the IATA Travel Center. It's just a nice travel website that has a map of all the countries in the world and their different restrictions. So in terms of Mexico, it's not restricted at all. They recommend just to fill out this one form. It's a questionnaire basically to ask if you have any symptoms, right, with COVID and just some basic information about yourself. So they, they ask about your temperature, they ask about coughing or sneezing, uh, discomfort or headaches or any breathing difficulties. So you can fill out this form online actually. I'll provide all four of these links on the bottom if you want to check it out. You can fill out online. You can take a screenshot, which is what I did with, with my situation. And I just showed it to the customs officer when I was coming through. I think they used to use a confirmation number to confirm that you've already filled this out. If not, on the plane ride, they actually give you a paper copy as well that you can fill out. So that's the only extra thing that I really had to do for COVID. First off, with travel and security, um, I got through the security checkpoint pretty quickly because I have the, the TSA pre-check. So, you know, I didn't have to take off my shoes, I didn't have to take off my belt, um, didn't even have to take my laptop out of my backpack. And I had two laptops with me and a tablet and also a second monitor. So that was very cool, got through quickly. Um, so if you have pre TSA pre-check, uh, you are set, my friend. <laughs> got through, got on the plane, everyone was wearing masks. Um, things were just normal and capacity was almost 95% um, on the, the two plane rides that I rode uh, in Dallas and from, uh, from Austin too. And so everything was okay. Um, I saw that part of the terminal was closed because um, maybe they were trying to save, uh, save money, you know, just section off uh, part of the airport, at least in Austin. To, to kind of cut down on on uh, funds and that sort of thing. I got to Monterrey, Mexico, um, expected the normal thing. They also removed a lot of uh, advertisements when you walk through one of the hallways, I noticed that. And then security and staff and everyone was still acting the same, nothing really new. There were some checkpoints for you to sanitize. There were hand sanitizers and that sort of thing. Restaurants were also the same, um, nothing special there. And so I wanted to tell you two interesting stories. I got through one of the security checkpoints for uh, my, my bags and they asked me if I have computer, a computer. And I said, yeah, I have two laptops with me, basically one for work and one for my personal. And so they made me open my bag and they were saying something about impuesto, it means tax and then something about cincuenta dollars. So I thought, oh crap, I need to pay like a $500 um, 
American tax because I have two computers. Like it was a, it was a new rule. Like I I didn't never heard of this, um, and I never had two laptops with me in the first place. And so I think at the end of the day, she was just checking if I was gonna sell the other laptop for money. And so it was okay. You know, I told, hey, this is my company laptop. I'm using it for work, and this other one's my personal. And she asked me how much money um, these laptops were worth, which one is worth more. Um, I'm not sure the process of what they're thinking. Maybe they were just checking like, uh, it's like it's not like a MacBook, the new the new latest MacBook for like two two to three K or something that I'm gonna sell to somebody here in Mexico. And I think that's the main thing that they were checking. But I told them, listen, it's just like a thousand, you know, a thousand bucks, eight hundred bucks, something like that. So they let me go through, no problem, and I'm very happy for that. And then later, I left the terminal, got in my Uber, and the ride was about um, 170 or 180 pesos to get to a nearby town, uh, about 15 minutes away, 20 minutes away. And we pull out the terminal, one of the police officers uh, stopped us, like in a police car, like flagged us down, and the driver, the Uber driver, stepped out, was talking to the cop for a good 15, 20 minutes. And in my mind, I was like, man, is this a corruption situation or something where, you know, they're gonna make the guy pay or there's something with, um, you know, they're gonna take my stuff? I don't know, because I had a friend recently who um, pretty much got robbed by the police, like straight up, you know. So I thought this might have been a situation like that because we were kind of outside the terminal a little bit. It was just us two cars on the road and that sort of thing. But, you know, that cleared out as well because I think the driver was explaining that you can't really just park or you can't drive through as an Uber. They want to bring back business for the local taxis. But the problem is the local taxis, they, they uh, overcharge people because they're losing business, they need money, you know, I understand that. And so the police is probably flagging down these Uber drivers, seeing that I'm a foreigner, I'm not taking a taxi, I'm riding with someone strange, therefore it must have been an Uber or something. So, good 20 minutes, we cleared out, uh, drove, drove out of there, and I was pretty satisfied with all, everything that happened, both computer and the Uber. And th that was pretty much travel and security for the most part. And second is uh, stores, attractions, streets, and restaurants. With respect to these different things, uh, I would say the majority of the stores are closed, so you are not able to actually sit down inside and eat, uh, with exception, which I'll explain in the next part. The different attractions, if you notice uh, the Neptune um, statue here in Monterrey, and then some of the palace fountains and stuff, they did not have water. They did not have that, that fountain that usually has water and it looks really nice. So they turned that off, probably to save money. Um, in the streets, everything was just fine. The amount of traffic was almost normal for what I was expecting. Um, in Barrio, Barrio Antiguo, they did close off some of the sections. And I don't know if it's just construction or if it was because of COVID. But I suspect it, it might have been construction. And in terms of restaurants, most of them are doing takeout only. And um, I haven't visited any street stalls just yet, except I, I, I see some, but I haven't visited them. Um, and I think business is just as normal for most places. I would say though, a majority of them are still closed. Um, so that leads me to the next section, part three, which is food places. Um, I went to basically three places that were no notable. Uh, one is called Greenhouse, which is close to the Central Central in, in Monterrey. And they're still open, um, just have masks, they had hand sanitizer, you can order the same amount of food and all that. It's one of my favorite places when I was here. And nearby, if you don't know, there's a nice mural um, next to the palace, uh, Palacio de Justicia or something like that. And um, if you're already there at the greenhouse, check out that mural, it's really nice. And lastly, we went to a restaurant last night, 
it was a sit down restaurant. You're able to sit down. I got some tacos and a hamburger. Um, and you just had the hand sanitized. The everyone was uh, relaxed. Everyone was spread out a little bit. Our server had a mask on. He even, uh, you know, separated himself uh, with distancing. And the the usual things that you would get, like uh, little chips, tostadas, or uh, totopos, um, and salsa. Everything was packaged up. So like in in a cup or in a bag. That way, there's no signs of contamination, that sort of thing. So that was really cool. Um, Semaforo is, is the restaurant that we ate at. It was decent, but I'm sure there's other places. And I'm just glad we got to sit down and enjoy uh, the area. Um, and lastly, I'm in my new apartment, and I'm, I'm renting this place for, I think, I'm just gonna look here real quick. But it wasn't that much, it was $182 total for nine days so I'm not sure the math I'll probably print it on the screen here for you and have it in the description below as well and the neighborhood here is quite safe we were walking around 10 or 11 last night and our uber driver was telling us the same thing pretty safe it's residential not of not a lot of like you know shady people however the area next to us called Independencia it's a little bit more, um, you know, shady because of all the, I think the factories and the companies that don't have people at night. So, you know, more, more questionable activities in the evening. The area I'm staying is called uh, Nuevo Pueblo. So it's a pretty great area. And I'm going to keep this video short. Basically, uh, that's what happened so far on my first day here in Mexico. I also have some of the spendings here at the bottom so you can get a sense of what prices are like down here. Thanks so much for watching and I will catch you guys in the next video.